Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and in today's video allow me to discuss with you the nature of the feeling type. What makes a person be a feeling type? Is it just the love stories and music? Or is it actually something behind it that is deeper than that? Uh, is it something that is genetic, that creates this impulse? Or is it something else, something different entirely? Is it purely development? Or is it actually something deeply rooted in us since our early first years? My personal belief is that there is something or people that have a deeper emotional processing and a deeper need for processing in particular. And I believe that the feeling process can neatly be described as the default mode network in the mind. The process in your mind that you use when you are in a restful, awake state. When you can say that you are kind of dreaming but you are awake. When your experience of the world is social, of a world that is like a dance or a theater or as an act where you aren't consciously thinking about yourself and how you move your hands and body and what you do and how you say things but where you just speak out on that uh, impulse on that feeling on that vibe on that uh, perspective of yours when you think to yourself I want to be um, this kind of person or I am this kind of person and when this being just having that thought of being that kind of person guides your action when a strong sense of self when you have a strong sense of self that guides how you move, how you speak, how you talk, how you solve different complex ethical and social and economic and financial issues. Just based on what is true to me, what is my identity, what is my goal, what is my feeling, how am I feeling, what is my need, what is my story, and what's my yearning and purpose. I think that often we use the feeling network to consider our history or our future as a story where we think back to past experiences uh, in a sense, in a social sense, connecting to how they made us feel, uh, thinking about how, it, how we experienced it, thinking about what it meant to us personally. Because feeling is a lot about relating to the world in a personal manner. Gone away are the objective definitions of how tall the chair was or what was logical. Instead, there are definitions of what was good for me. What did I enjoy? What did I like? What felt good to me? What caused a positive experience in me? What caused a good positive experience in other people? How did it affect other people? How did uh, this room, being in this room, feeling this lights, being a part of this with these people, sitting by this campfire, sharing stories, how did it affect people and how can I affect people in a way that is positive and uh, important? That's, I think, a lot of in many ways are feeling questions. I think that in many ways feeling and thinking is about how we engage the world. It's not about how we take in information or how we experience it in the sense of uh, how it looks. It's about how we order and organize the world once we have seen it, once we have uh, taken it in, once we have gone into it. Do we experience it? How do we experience something like an artwork? How do we experience something like a system of logic, rules, definitions, boxes, categories, and uh, formal <laughs> information? How do we create some form of rationality in the world? How do we enforce some form of reason in the world? What do we think is rational? I think often the question is that feeling types are irrational, acting on emotions and impulse, and that the thinking types are rational, reasonable, and making what is uh, logical sound judgment. But to me, I believe that an irrational person is a person that acts against what they need, what they think is important, what they find meaningful. Being irrational is when you discard what you think is rational, just, fair, good, uh, according to your definition, regardless if you are a thinker or a feeler. And being irrational is when you stop acting like that, a feeling type acting on thinking values. That is an irrational person. A thinking person who values thinking and logic, acting on emotions and impulses. That is being irrational. Uh, it's the case to me that 
a feeling type gets their sense of reason, their, their sense of what is inherently right, inherently important from engaging in daydreaming, feeling, reasoning, storytelling. It is when you have a solid grasp of who you are and what is right for you and what you need as a feeling type that you can make rational decisions where you can make life choices that will make you and your friends and family happy. When you are trying to live in a way that fits with your story and your personal motive and what you envision for yourself because that vision is not illogical, it's based on a firm grasp of who you are, who your friends are, who your family are, who your connections are, what you care about, what's important to you. So being a feeling type, that ties in intimately to being able to act in accordance with your story, no matter what that story is. Being a thinking type, that is about acting in accordance with what you think is objective, what you think is the rational thing based on your order, your sense of what is a high, good hierarchy, what's a good goal, what's a good logical operation, what's the right way to do something, what is the right way to get to where you need to go, what is, in your definition, logical, what can you see is logical, because that's also it, that feelers don't need to have uh, logical, clear defined paths for everything they do. They don't need clear formal instructions guiding their every action. Sometimes they might think they do if they second guess themselves too much and if they become irrational as I would describe it. But if they are rational they can go with their gut because they have learned from their history that their gut is actually pretty darn, darn smart. Uh, your gut represents your deeper, more complex, more vague, but still, uh, still important sense of what you want and what you need. When you act on and trust your perspective and your personal story, your personal truth, and when you start seek to investigate and learn more about it, and when you make decisions there where you can experience that, that's when you are exploring yourself as a feeling type. The feeling type is a person that I think is a little in need of deeper emotional processing. And I mentioned this before earlier in this video. And what I mean with this is that uh, because uh, we need more emotional processing to feel good, in a sense that we need to, without it, we feel empty, we feel cold, we feel robotic. A feeling type that doesn't have that connection to their story, and they need a stronger connection to their story than a thinking type, uh, will feel empty, robotic, cold, and out of touch with their inner needs. So as a feeling type, what I can only ask for you is to honor that need for deeper processing. If you need to tune out from the world, from the cold facts and objective truths, take a step back, dream, let go of all your work, your tasks, your definitions, and all. <laughs> let go of your sense of uh, wanting everything to make sense. Because a feeling type that tries too hard to make everything make sense will feel a little overwhelmed, will feel a little cold, will feel like life is unimportant, that things don't mean anything. It's like an experience, it's like going deep into nihilism. I think for a thinking type, if everything is relative and personal and subjective, nothing is important. But to a feeling type, if everything is objective, formal and uh, logical, then <laughs> nothing makes matters. So often to get in touch with what you matter, what matters to you, you have to respect that sense of what you need. Because I think that for a thinking type, storytelling is good and positive and great, uh, but the thinking type's gloss of how many qualities and how many stories and how many feelings they can process fills up more quickly. For a feeling type, the ability to grasp logic, objects, uh, functions, definitions, and to make sense of everything, that need fills up very quickly. And if you go beyond that as a feeling type, 
that's where like it feels like yeah I'm getting more and more and I'm getting a better grasp of everything but why why am I even doing it what's the point just like this it's the same for the thinking type when there is uh, there, there are more stories are coming and you're getting more connections and you're feeling like that uh, you have a, a strong stance but still it's like why so what what's the point of this <laughs> I think I've heard many thinkers tell me many times when I've spoken to them what's the point of this <laughs> because I think that need for things to make sense is so important for the thinking type it's how they feel that things matter that's when start feeling things start feeling important when there is something that makes sense about your goal your political value your moral issues whatever it is when it feels like there is something objectively right about it when there's something that is sane about it that's when a thinker starts feeling that yes i want to do it so often you motivate a thinker in a different way than a feeler and you'll have to learn to talk to them differently but still you find that we all want a world that matters there is no cold unemotional type there is no type that wants things to feel pointless everyone is searching for the point why we are all here what my purpose is we are just searching for it in different ways and if you search for it in the wrong place uh, according to what other people think is important, but not you. You'll feel lost. So be aware of this and think about what is important to you and get in touch with your feeling or your thinking function. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and may your neurons be with you.